Hi, little face. Hi, welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to do my typical routine with the ferrets. So it's basically my ferret, this is ferret proofing. So I talk about this sometimes in my videos. And um, so my ferrets, obviously, you know, they have their room or whatever, and they normally play upstairs. And sometimes we let them play in the living room, but my living room is not set up for ferrets. So that means that they get behind the TV and they bite the buttons on the remote controls to the playstations and all this other stuff and it's all bad for them so if they swallow remote buttons it could cost me a ton of money in surgery and it could potentially harm them so ferret proofing is very important in order for me to make my living room safe and suitable for my ferrets I have to do a number of things <laughs> so um, just to give you an example of what ferret proofing looks like if you don't know I will show you what I do currently to allow my ferrets to play in other areas of my house. So let's do it. Sorry, it's really early in the morning, like 5.45, I'm getting ready for work, and I try to get up a couple hours early to play with them before I go. So yeah, I'm not even like coffeeed up yet. <laughs> anyway, here we go. So once I separate this, it works perfectly to surround my entertainment center. The ferrets love to get inside of those white wicker baskets. They also are able to get in the baskets and then hoist themselves up onto like where the, where the TV is. Um, they really like to try to chew wires and just get into stuff. And I don't really want them back here because I don't want them to get hurt. So this is how I keep them out. It's not aesthetically pleasing. However, it's temporary and I just leave it there while they play. I use the other portion of the play yard to surround this fish tank. The ferrets get back behind here and they really are infatuated with the rubber tubing to my air stone. I don't really want them eating rubber tubing and I also don't want my air stone unplugged. So this is how we stop that. This is a storage closet that goes back pretty far. Um, there's a lot of things in here that could fall on the ferrets. There's things in here that they could eat. So I use a blanket to pretty much shove underneath the door. You have to really get it in there tight. I found that if I don't put it in there pretty tight, they can pull it out and get under the door anyway. Now I watch them while I'm down here, but it's just a pain once they get inside here. So this is how I stop them from doing that. Ferrets really love the buttons on a remote. So I always make sure mine are put up. Okay, so before I move on to the next portion of the video, I just wanted to cover a couple of little things. Um, before I bring the ferrets down, I typically do a sweep of the living room, like underneath the couch, underneath any of the dress, like the coffee table or any of that stuff, just to make sure that there's nothing that's fallen that they can get that will hurt them. Um, right now, for example, my husband is using this room as an office due to the COVID-19 situation. So there could be pens on the floor and sometimes pens have rubber grips. And I know for my ferrets, they really love pens with rubber grips. So if they find one, they will try to take it and hide it and eat the rubber off. So in the next part, I intentionally left some things for my ferrets to find so that I could show you um, just exactly what I mean by them getting things that they shouldn't have or things that you may not think about or you may not even be looking for because you don't know that they're there. Another example of some things that that are good to know is I use a regular baby gate to block the doorway. However, my ferrets can go over that gate. Basically that gate is not, it's got bars that go in all directions and it's perfect for climbing. And ferrets are excellent climbers. My, I have two ferrets that basically just could get on top of just about anything. So they can also climb up on the desk upstairs sometimes. If I leave things in a way where they can get up on the chair, then onto the desk, and then they open the drawer, and inside is a desk drawer. So imagine all of the things that are in there that they shouldn't have. In addition, it's also my sewing room. So yeah. Um, so there's like all these little things that I don't think that we always think about when we're ferret proofing our house because you're just not thinking that your ferrets are gonna go through all that trouble but I promise you that they will. Um, and so in an effort to just kind of give you guys a little bit of insight onto some of the things that your ferrets may do or may try to get a hold of that you may not have even thought about, I just wanted to do this next clip. So here we go.
that's that. It finally got light outside. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go get the ferrets. They get super, super excited when they get to play down here. It's like it's they're, they're just over the moon. You'll see. So here we go. I tried to open the door and like show you how that was, but because they wait for me, they run out and then I can't catch them. And um, I want to take them downstairs. And so <laughs> the doors weren't shut between the rooms. So they would then end up in my bedroom. So I had to just give up filming that whole experience because they were just took off. Everybody get in, get in, let's go. Come on, let's go downstairs. <laughs> 